Welcome to Thrones, and welcome to Scones. Welcome to your weekday morning podcast, where we talk about welcoming you to Game of Thrones over a very welcoming breakfast. Uh, welcome, Tony Hans and Jeremy here on this very welcome Wednesday. Uh, I just, welcome guys, you're welcome. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, today, we are tackling season seven, episode three, The Queen's Justice. It's the third episode of the seventh season of Game of Thrones, the 63rd episode of the series overall, and it premiered on July 30th, 2017, written by David Benioff and D.B. Weiss and directed by Mark Mylod. (laughs) But you knew that. (laughs) Today does have uh, one of these painfully brief plots. It's four sentences, all of which are less than five words. So strap in for that. Who do you want to read you just the shortest, shittiest plot recap of them all? I see that you came prepared. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Always. Uh, I feel like we've covered covered a good amount now. Did we do, Jeremy, anybody that you can think of? I mean, for me, I, I've, uh, no, cause you gave us a little bit of Irish and a little bit of this Australian accent before we started recording. So now that's throwing me off cause I'm like, oh, well, you could just do, um, let's see. I, I'm thinking, uh, a little Oprah. Oprah. That, how, how did you get that from that. Irish and Australian to yeah. Oprah? Yeah. Well, I just Oprah. Like- yeah. Oprah, very famously, the daughter of Irish Australian immigrants. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I knew we'd get there. The, nat- the natural choice, I suppose. <laughs> I feel like we did Oprah. I think we? we may have. Yeah. No. I think so. I think so too. Okay. All right. Maybe All right. just just do Tony. Let's just just give us Tony back. Just do Tony. All yeah. right. Yeah, I can. Hold on. Let me practice a little bit. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> Mommy made me mash my M and M's. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. He's going to do Australia. Daenerys holds court. (laughs) 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 What? (laughs) Oh, okay. No? All right, fine. I wasn't wasn't quite there. You... Unique New York. Unique New York. All right, I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. <clears throat> Daenerys holds court. Tyrion back channels. Cersei returns a gift. Jamie learns from his mistakes. Way to go, Game of Thrones. Fandom. Com. Yeah, that really sums it up well. Uh, wait, <laughs> no, I, I, you deserve a proper, a proper hazing. Attention HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash Game of Thrones dot fandom dot com slash wiki slash the underscore queen percent sign 27 S underscore justice. Mm-hmm. Up your game. You could almost put that plot on just really any random episode that those characters show up in and it probably and fit. And it would have fit. Yeah, that's fair. Um, season seven, episode three, the queen's justice. Talk to me, fellas. I think Jeremy started things yesterday. So, Hans, if you would like to take it today, yeah, give it from either side of the spectrum. Whether you want to start in the the low, low pits of the seventh ring of the eternal hells, or up in the beautiful heavens where angels will tickle your feet with uh, with their tongues. Yeah, uh, I will start <laughs> sure. with what is. Yeah. Yeah, Isn't that okay. what it says in the Bible? Yeah. Pretty <laughs> sure that's exactly what I read. And if you're a I good read. boy, you get to go to heaven. Oh, did you get some of that will... tonguing of the feet? I did. Yeah. That's what Jesus did, right? He, like, tongued Peter's feet. Mm-hmm. That's the story. Yeah. And then yeah. Jesus wept. Mm-hmm. Hmm. I was pretty sure. Uh, anyway. But my, <laughs> uh, I'm going to start off, since we started off on the on the low of last episode, let's kick it off with the high. Ooh. My favorite part. Uh, I really liked the the entire scene, which was a good chunk of the episode. But I really liked the entire um, entire scene of kind of Tyrion monologuing over the invasion of Casterly Rock, and uh, yeah. and that playing out in in real time as he's talking. 
Uh, and then I thought that alone was super cool. And then the twist on the end with oh. with uh, Cersei kind of anticipating this uh, and, and taking the army to, to Highgarden um, was very cool. So It's such a cool moment. The... It almost doesn't seem like something that would work on paper for Game of Thrones. The whole idea of like, oh, okay, you're narrating this while it's happening from a VO perspective. Like, it kind of sounds cheesy, but I thought it worked really yeah. well. Um, it looked very cool. That that scene was awesome. Um, the twist was great. Obviously, we've seen it before. We knew it was coming. I remember when it just happened. I was like, I like slow clapped in in my seat on the couch. I was like, well done. Cersei, I don't say this often, but for once, you've got your shit under control. And I think Jamie even says in the, like the next episode, um, like, oh yeah, we we learned from Rob Stark, <laughs> you know, like we yeah. we pay attention, um, respect. But yeah, that's my favorite part too. That whole thing was baller. Yeah, I, it was a really really cool scene. And then I think it even led in, leading into the, uh, it's all part of that, of course, but leading into the scene with Jamie and Olena, I thought that was very good. Uh, I thought the whole, the whole second half of the episode was, uh, or that whole second, that final sequence with that was just awesome. So, yeah, the, uh, and Olena coming clean to murdering Joffrey and, uh, then dying, we assume. Never see it. So maybe I'm sure there's a conspiracy out there. It's like uh, Elena's not dead. She's a face. She's actually man. a Targaryen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, but yeah, that was great, Jeremy. Yeah, um, you know, for me, there, it's kind of I'm kind of torn. There, there's a lot about this episode I really enjoyed. Um, I'll give uh, I'll give Cersei her due. Um, I love I love the imaging of. Um, Alaria and Tyene at the end, knowing what they know about how Tyene's going to die. Um, I thought that was a really powerful moment because it's not that you're really invested in these characters, but like you get that Cersei is always one step ahead. She's always play like she's clearly thought this through in the sense of how she wants this person to suffer. Um, and it's, it's fucked up, but at the same time, it just shows like how good she is at controlling her world. Um, and then again, now knowing that we know the Lannister army, where they went, uh, knowing that the Castle Rock was going to be a, you know, essentially a waste to hold. So they were just fortifying other places. Uh, I get that entire thing that Hans was saying. I thought that the Tyrion overtone was really, really good. Um, I don't know, like, this ep- this episode, I thought, to me, got back on track compared to our last episode, which slowed down a little bit more. Yeah, so, yeah. I agree. Uh, oh. The Cersei thing with Ilaria and Tyene, pretty ruthless, pretty good. Um, Cersei's even got that little character break there, which I liked, where she's talking about, like, you know, you killed my daughter. Yeah. Why did you do that? Like, just, and just super emotional, like, just kind of looking at her before she regains her, like, queenly brutal demeanor yeah like like, that was cool give me an answer kind of thing um what i didn't like happened right before that um because euron's back in throne room Uh, i hate when this man walks i hate when he talks and i especially hate what should be a hilarious joke but just it was like really when when he goes up to jamie and he's like you'll have to give me some tips uh you know now that we're going to be brothers or something. And he's like, tips. And he's like, about the queen. What does she like? A finger in the bum. <laughs> <laughs> I was just I was like, like four feet from Cersei, of course. Oh, it was, it was so, it was just, it's that dude's just too much. Agreed. That, uh, yeah. that was, that was my least favorite part as well. Followed shortly after by Cersei and Jamie getting busy, getting back together. I'm done with them. Mm. Yeah. I like Jamie. I want him to be away from Cersei. Stop it. Stop. Stop. I no. didn't, I didn't Bash. really care for the Winterfell with Sansa and and uh, and Bran as well. Um, specifically because I'm like, when Sansa's telling Bran, like, hey, now you're the Lord. Like, you gotta, you got now this is really what you have to do. And he's like, you know, I'm the, I'm the thir- third eye raven. That's not my thing anymore. I mean, I don't get why she doesn't accept. I'm in third eye blind. 
<laughs> I'm in third eye blind. I'm the yeah. I'm the one eyed Willy. I'm in third eye red. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm cool. Uh, but no, what I don't understand is like why we know the direction this goes. But why is she selling it so hard of this like descent kind of thing? What do you mean? I mean, like, it seems like she's really unhappy with John in general being in a leadership position. And she's trying to undermine him, in my opinion. I didn't get that vibe. I just kind of thought that she was implying that he would be... Because he didn't, she didn't say king in the north. Oh, you she mean like just Lord. Said Lord of Winterfell. Oh, see, now when I watched it, I, I just felt like it was like her undermining, uh, undermining uh, John while he was gone. It could be. It's not the vibe that I got, but it, yeah, you could be right. Because Baelish is still there, still talking shit, and I feel like, I don't know, like that, when I watched this, this was my initial, like, I was like, oh, God, like, Sans is just annoying me. Um, yeah. But, yeah, so anyway. But then the whole, like, when he tells her about the whole uh, rape and everything, and she's like, walks away crying, I'm like, why, why, why did you go there, brah? Why do, you, why do you have to be that guy? <laughs> <laughs> that was weird. And I understand that he's not, and we'll get into it in the next couple episodes a lot. Um, we've got to come to terms with, and by we, I mean every character in the show, that Bran isn't really Bran yeah, anymore. He's no longer Bran, yeah. Um, and I do have a lot to say about that, but I don't think it's really presented itself the opportunity yet. So I will hold my tongue and tease the fact that you have to at least listen to us through the end of the season so you can get my full Bran discussion. I know you're just chomping at the bit for it. Um, one of my other favorite moments from the show was right at the beginning, though, in Dragonstone, where John and Davos arrive, and uh, they're welcomed in, and Masande is like, uh, well, they see the dragons, and anytime anyone sees the dragons for the first time is a great moment yeah. in the show, so that was cool. Yeah. Um, Masande is like, uh, you stand in the presence of Daenerys Stormborn of House Targaryen, the unburnt the mother of dragons, rightful queen of the Andals and the first men, breaker of chain, like, you know, going through all her shit. Khaleesi of the great grass sea. Khaleesi. Uh, uh, and, uh, and then <laughs> Thomas was just like, this is Jon Snow. He's king in the north. <laughs> 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 and there's that beat. And I think even Tyrion gives like a nice, like, like a chuckle smile thing or whatever. Um, very cool. Um, it's already, I, I think that this is another scene subtly that is hinting at Daenerys being a villain. What do you mean? She, she's, there's this level of vanity to her over Jon Snow. And I understand it. I don't think that anything about her comes off as vicious, but I think they're going to pretty good lengths to pinpoint the differences in these characters, in their fundamental understandings of the world. Um, and in how they're approaching everything. And I just think that they're going to go ahead and, you know, try to bring things together. We already see that a little bit later in the episode when she allows him to mine the dragon glass and whatnot. Um, I, I just think they're providing the opportunity to put that wedge in down the line. And, uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm hedging my bets, man. But I feel like, um, Game of Thrones in general has very much made this statement with the throne of anyone who thinks they have a right to it probably shouldn't be sitting on it, it's right? True. And it's so true. we've – and Danny comes over now and is still very much that old mentality of like, I am your queen because I am your queen. That's the end of the conversation. Mm. And they're like, no, we've had that. We've lived with that. That that has never been well with us, you know? Um, and now it's time for a change because the world is changing. We have the Night King. We have all this death above us. And you're just old order. And I, so I feel like that's the way the show's going. So I agree with you in the sense that where, where Danny may be different is she, she has listened to her advisors where all other people have not done that, right? Uh, yes. Very much so. You know, like, uh, I mean, Essentially, Jamie tried to talk the Mad King out of it, tried to talk, you know, and then ended up having to. Uh, Robert wouldn't listen to Ned and s- instead kind of set things in with uh, agreeing to the assassination of Danny, where, you know, maybe if he would have let that go, Danny would have. Would have Danny have ever sought out to come to Westeros? 
That's a good point. I don't know. Maybe not. Or she would have done it earlier and prematurely because she's kind of the one who wants to stay and rule in Marine when everyone's like, we should go to Westeros. Right, right. Um, you know? Uh, that This is actually making a good point I hadn't thought of. And I think it could go to make your point or my point, depending. Um, and that is, you're right. There are these big moments of people ignoring their advisors. Rob's final kind of push uh, is him ignoring everyone when they're like, hey, don't kill this guy. And he kills this guy. And that, yep. you know, ultimately yep. creates this his spiral downward. And we're coming off um, in last episode, a scene where John dis not disobeyed, but like went against every other single person in Winterfell. Um, and so I think that they're leading to some sort of like, oh, hey, that's that's not this is going to end badly, blah, yeah. blah, blah. But is it going to end badly? Because it's like, oh, John's going to get scrapped. He's going to be done, whatever. Or it's like because he's going to end up at odds with this dragon queen and they're going to have a terrible fight. I'm not saying John survives. I also think John dies at the end of this show. But uh, I, I think he goes out stopping, stopping Daenerys Targaryen, the ultimate white. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, like, I don't... I'd be interesting to see how this plays out in that sense because Dan Danny for me has gotten better in the sense of that vanity. Uh, yes. I, I mean, I think she she falls back to it when she's around people she doesn't know and she wants to have some sort of control. But then I feel like she loses that pretty quickly, right? Like with with Tyrion, you know, makes makes him the hand like. That there's no reason for him to be the hand for her. But she realizes that, you know, he has been a good advisor, he's been a good friend, and she generally treats her, her friends very well, giving them more power than maybe they should have. And even, yeah, in the last episode as well, she has that conversation with Varys. Yeah. And at the end of it, she says, like, you know, if I'm doing something that is going to be bad for the common people, tell don't me. Go against me. Yeah. Tell me. Like, yeah. I want to know. Right. Like she's setting up, she's setting up a, an honesty in her empire, if you will, that I think sure. that I think the show hopefully reinforces because I feel like that's that's a cool thing to do compared to the other kind of. I mean, like Stannis, right? Stannis was ignoring his advisors all the time, and look what that did, right? Uh, although you could Very argue true. maybe he was listening to Melisandre, who was an advisor, and that led to his downfall. So maybe that's not a solid argument there. It's. it's a complex web but it's good but it's good because i like john i like john and danny being at odds with each other more now than in the future Mm. like i like this this interaction a lot more than the future it's a good one yes uh i think this episode the next episode it's pretty good there is a lot of it we could just get a lot of them talking yeah but it's okay it's okay yeah um my only other note in this episode is uh, Jorah's all better, and he's back. Yay. 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 Jorah. <laughs> Jorah. Yay, Jorah. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, and that's that's pretty much it. That's all I got. Anything else from... Uh... Oh, and our good, bad, and juggly moment. We had one, and it was uh, Jamie's butt and uh, Cersei. I don't think we've gotten to see Jamie's butt yet. So, okay. Yeah, Do- yeah I, told, I didn't even write that part down. I obviously wrote that they got busy, but didn't write the didn't put the yeah, juggly not into it juggly well, star just, by it. You were uh, you were clocked out at that point. I think. Do, do you yeah. think Jamie doesn't have a do butt. anything to Olena because he really doesn't give a flying fuck about Joffrey? Well, he had already poisoned her at that point. I know, but it was a it was a nice death, right? I mean, like this is one not not a painful death, not any way like. Mutil- you know, mutilating her or anything like that. I mean, like they conquered, and then he's like, you know, I'm not here to. I mean, here, here's a drink. It's painless. You just die. And she rubs it in his face. What she did to his son, and he's just like, oh, all right, well, that sucks. Well, what's he gonna do? He has you know, a fucking sword. It's old. Yeah, if it's an old lady, I don't know. Yeah, I think that if J- an old J- lady murdered your son, you wouldn't want to just fucking bash your head in with something. I think that mm. Jamie's just such a pragmatic guy. Like he and he, we even get this in the next episode, maybe when he's talking to Cersei about it and telling her everything, and she's she's all pissed at him. Like you, yeah. you know, we should have made her step. And he's like, "What does it matter? 
she's dead. She's just as dead as everyone else. And yeah, uh, I think he's just like he's a he's a he's just kind of get get me to the end zone. Let's get things accomplished. Yeah, yeah. Just made a just made a sports reference for anybody not paying attention. Yeah, yeah. A, ba- a baseball one, right? Baseball reference. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> but then, any, anything else that you guys want to talk? Uh, justice? Just no, I think that was pretty, pretty well done. We I say so we, myself. We've been flying through this. Okay. You're all well, welcome. Once again, I think for like probably the 19th episode in a row, I neglected at the offset to even tell you about the scones that we were t- that enjoying today, uh, which was oatmeal chocolate chip, uh, an oatmeal chocolate chip scone. These are ones that I made uh, the other evening. When I really wanted dessert, <laughs> but I didn't have anything. Um, and uh, all I had was baking chocolate. And these things really required a little bit more of, a, of at least a blend of semi-sweet to milk chocolate. So it, sure. it's a little too chalky, especially with the oatmeal. There, there's a lot of stodginess to these suckers. Um, but from a taste perspective, you know what? They're okay. All right. All right. Uh, it's been like probably since season one that I've had anyone do this. So just to put you on the spot, Hans, outro the people. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can and do it as Peter Griffin. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can't do that. Uh, even close, but <laughs> we. You can find us on uh, www.thronesandscones.com, <laughs> right? <laughs> That's where I think we are. Yep. Uh, This was season seven, episode three. Are you guys down with (laughs) GOT? Yeah, you know me. I feel like every time you hear someone say www dot, we're in the (laughs) nineties. It's called a website. It's on the interweb. It's on the World Wide Web. The amount of commercials that I have had to make for companies that want us to put www dot in the uh freaking commercial is insane like oh God, haven't we had commercials for long enough that people realize these stupid tropes like www dot no one pays attention if your web address has a slash in it don't say that you're fucked you're you're screwed um people who want their phone number repeated Ooh. that's not like 1-800 contacts it's like you know 759-832-2255 and you have to say it three times. No one is remembering that. They are only remembering that they're pissed for hearing it. Yeah, and no <laughs> like, one is um, like getting out their phone going, oh, God, let me hear it two more times. Yeah. It's been like 50 years of radio commercials. You'd think that people would be better at this point. Super, uh, super, super frustrating. What's been the best commercial you've ever done? Uh, the first commercial I ever made won a national award. <laughs> really? Yeah. It's, it was, I made it uh, for a project in uh, college. And I've never made a better commercial in my life. And it kind of haunts me um, <laughs> that, I, that I peaked. It was for a restaurant in Macomb. There's also actually one in Quincy. And I've tried to get them to use the commercial, and they won't because they don't want to advertise. And it pisses me off. Um, but it was for a restaurant called Chicks, and I made a song. I made a jingle. And it went like, uh, it had the sweet bass line, and it went, Gotta go to Chicks, gotta get those lips. <laughs> And uh, yeah, won a, won a Nash, National Broadcasting Society uh, Grand Prize Award. That's awesome. And they won't use it. <laughs> and they won't use it. <laughs> well, no, why would they? They got all this free press from it. I wouldn't use it either. They got their money's worth, which was zero dollars. <laughs> I've also found that like talking so much, I discovered the other day, we had a conversation. Uh, me and another DJ realized that we no longer have that thing where our voice sounds different on a recording than it does in our head. Interesting. And I, I don't know if we just like have listened to it so much that we make the mental correction now. Um, but, and, and I mean, just because I've been doing this for a fair amount of time at this point, a long time ago, it stopped being weird to listen yeah, to myself yeah. back. Like you just, it's, it's, a, it's a professional hazard. You have to do it so much. Um, but I had not realized until like a month ago that it just, what I sound like in my head right now is what I'm going to sound like when I listen to this back. That's interesting. Which is odd. 
So personal growth, maybe. <laughs> maybe that's what you'd call it. I don't know. Um, I've also found that you kind of get over a lot of the tongue twisters. I think I nailed a couple of them in the last, you know, mommy made me mash my M&Ms and all the things like that. She sells seashells by the seashore. But I have found that the worst <laughs> thing I've ever had to say in the commercial script is 656 South 6th Street. <laughs> 656 South 6th Street. Yikes. Because, and you nailed it right there. My problem is I get caught up on the on the latter half of the word sixth. Yeah. Sixth. Um, yeah. Because it's such a different consonant it. than all the S's. And uh, and then I just, I lose it, man. It took so long to record that one. 656 South 6th Street. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I still feel like when I hear myself back, though, it's it's starkly different. It's uh, I well ha- actually a quick shout out, uh, Dylan Dutch. Have you seen him? He does some comedy sketch videos, yeah, uh, and he has a really good one about like recording a uh, recording a like a voicemail, like rec- himself recording the voicemail. Oh yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I, I might have told you guys about this already, but it was I've seen it, super yeah. super funny. Um, so any listeners out there could check out, I think is do you, what is his Facebook business boy or something like that? Yeah. Yeah. It's something like that. Business, business b- boy or the business boy, business boy. Check it out. He's got some funny videos. That one, especially the, the voicemail thing. He's, he's, he's setting up his voicemail and he's like, hi, this is, uh, he's just like too super casual. He's like, Hey, this is Dylan. Uh, I'm not at the phone right now. Please call me back. And then he like goes to listen to back and he's like, hi, this is Dylan. <laughs> <laughs> this is like the worst. He's like, what? So then he like does it again. And he like try, he's like, <clears throat> okay. Hi, this is Dylan. Uh, I'm not a you know, like does it a little deeper, and then he goes back, and it just keeps getting worse and worse as he's listening <laughs> back to it. That's really really funny. I think my favorite one is the uh, I don't remember what it's called, but like his his roommates go away for the weekend or yeah, whatever, and it yeah. like cues up the bam 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 bam. Oh yeah, it's just him like <laughs> fucking eating Fruit Loops. Like, yeah, and he, he's just like binging Netflix and like yeah. napping napping on the couch. Shout out and, to uh, shout so out, funny. Shout out to Dylan, big fan of the podcast. Mm-mm.